Hello. Hello, I'm Betsy again. <laughs> Tell up some of your time <laughs> and give it to me. <laughs> oh boy, I love to smile. Some people said I smile too much, but I just love it. You know, it's a part of me. And I just want to give you a few quotes that I live by. And one is, never, don't use drugs, okay? Because drugs destroy your mind. You'd be surprised how you look to other people when you're high. And you don't even remember sometimes what it is you did or even thought about doing. Another one, another one destroys your mind. So just say no if you can. Try to get out of it. Work your way out. Another one, don't be a, don't, uh, be a kept person. Don't let nobody keep you. Find your own way because you're totally dependent upon that person. And once you um, relinquish your your life to them, they could do it with you as they will. Don't give anybody that power over you. Always try to, try to find something that you could do and, and take care of yourself. So if the deal go down or whatever, you're still able to make it. You just walk away and go ahead and with your and carry on your life. Okay, um, let's see. Don't be a kept woman. Don't use drugs. Don't be a prostitute, for God's sakes, because they're destroying your body. Prostitution destroys your body. There's nothing healthy about it. And, uh, you know, when your body is gone, they just leave you and get somebody else. So try not to be a prostitute. I'd rather pick up bottles off the street than to sell my body, because at least picking up the bottles off the street, people just make fun of you, because that's the way people are. They're not going to help you, but they're going to, uh, trash you or whatever they could do to keep you from making a living or taking care of yourself in the way that you can in a decent manner. So don't worry about them. Okay, here's one of the quotes that God made you to carry the story. You're beautiful and easy to watch. You are knowledgeable and interesting to follow. So God made you to carry the story. You know a lot of things. You know, sometimes you keep it to yourself but sometimes it's good if you know something that's productive, to share it with somebody, you know? Because a lot of times people people are successful and uh, they just keep it to themselves quiet. Sometimes they know things that uh, could benefit you and everybody in the community, even themselves, but they won't share it with anybody. I know one time the, uh, they had this program in Harlem in New York and they were had um, they were selling the, selling the houses in, uh, in, uh, in Harlem, you know, for practically nothing, you know? And uh, th these ministers were getting these houses and um, they were fixing them up and they, and they put them in um, some kind of a lottery system. And you could, if you put your name in, they called your name out, you, you, they would call you down, interview you, and they would give you one of those houses. And that's the way this restart, you know, they keep, and they try to keep Harlem black, you know, but the black people weren't listening. They weren't paying attention to how important those meetings were that they were having. They would have lawyers coming in, contractors, bankers, all kind of people. And they would have the people coming in from the neighborhood and, and try to tell them the importance of uh, putting your name on the list if, uh, uh, to get one of these houses. They gave me a three-family brownstone in Harlem, which was very nice. But I couldn't get it because I was in another program that owned the same program as the houses. I was in a co-op program, which I had to co-op. So they gave me the house too, but I couldn't have them both. So I had to choose which one I wanted. <laughs> I think... I think the house would have given me more profit today because Harlem is booming now. You can forget it, how Harlem is booming now. To get a brownstone now, three family brownstone, it'll cost you a lot of money. But but uh, but anyway, you just keep so you keep following your dream. Okay, okay. Live as though life, live as though your life was created just for you. You know, just creep. I mean, like, there's the, it's, the world is yours if you want it. You have to go after it. Sometimes it takes a short time to get accomplished things that you want to. Sometimes it doesn't. But you just have to, and, and in a decent way. A lot of times people do things, they weren't in a hurry. And they do things, they let other things interfere with their, with their, their dreams. And they go to a shortcut, which is not good. Because sometimes the shortcut could wind up being the long way. The long way. Okay. Live life as though it was just created just for you. Try. Fabulous at you are fabulous at any age. Our society makes you think that the beauty, the beauty company, the beautiful comp uh, the uh, cosmetic comp uh, companies are the only thing that can make you beautiful. Like they put you, they paint you like a canvas, your face like a canvas, and you and they paint on it. But you're beautiful from birth. You're always beautiful. But they make you think that you're not, you need this, you need that. People Carrying around a sack of makeup, like about 
putting 16 things on them to change the way their face is, but they're already beautiful. And somebody need to tell them that if they can't see with their own eyes, somebody just need to tell, tell them that. Okay. Re be real. Try to be real as a diamond. A diamond is real. There's nothing fake about that. Don't wait for life. Live it. Live your life. Don't sit around waiting because time, I'll tell you something, time doesn't wait for nobody. It's here and it's moving and it's moving fast. You'd be surprised. Sometimes I can remember things that happened 10 years ago as if it happened yesterday. That's how fast time is moving. Good Lord, have mercy. I don't know. Beauty doesn't age. The elegance and grace never goes out of style. You know, I, sometimes I watch American TV and they have everybody like a size zero or one or two. Everybody's thin and everybody got these, you know, they have these wig. Um, uh, when they have the makeup room, they have a lot of wigs. So a lot of times people, they have to change the way they look so they can fit their character that they're playing in this particular time. You know what I mean? But nobody wants to be old. And and, and old age is like a part of life. If you look at the American TVs, there's, nobody wants to get old. And But if you look at the... Say, uh, I don't know if it's English is the Irish uh, communities when they when they are aging when they are doing their shows in their plays, they show themselves growing old naturally like like it should be. You, you should people shouldn't be ashamed of their age. How old are you? What's it to you? I mean, what what's the big thing? You should be proud to be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You should be proud. Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed to tell anybody how old you are? <laughs> and these old men. I noticed a lot of men that get married to somebody, their wife help them up from scratch when you're first starting out when you're young. And then after you've had everything, the kids are grown and everything. Here you are stepping outside and some young girls telling me, man, you still, man, you still got it. You still got it, sweet daddy, you know. <laughs> and he got you walking like a pimp with the hip hop, this or that, you know, it's just dying your hand going on, you know. But but uh, then you, I mean you can't an old man can't keep up with a young girl. It's just it's just no way. It's just no way. It's nothing common about you two guys. You know, you got a good woman at home, but you don't see her as that be beautiful anymore. You see, because she's not exciting anymore like she used to be. But the young girl is. She's all over you, telling you, "Daddy, all right, you all right, Daddy." You know, and you going for the okie doke. You go out there with this young girl, and she might keep you for maybe a month, and she telling you to get the heck out of here. You know, I can't be bothered. I want to go to the disco. I want to party. I want to look good. I want to wear my short dress or whatever she wants to do, like the young people are doing. And you can't keep up with her. And <laughs> it's just not the way nature is. So you go back home and you try to t uh, talk to your wife. She say, get out of here. Get out of here. I don't want you. You know, I'm not going to try to take you away from the children, but you can't stay here. Not after you left me. So, you know, people have to, people have to realize that, you you know, Oh, what's going on in life? You know, you can I still got it. Oh, she she said I still got it. <laughs> that is so stupid. You know, I guess you uh, uh, uh okay. I wish you the love and I wish you the love as all the hearts in your circle give you the thanks that you deserve. Because you you spend your whole life, you know, being nice or trying to be a good father, trying to be a good husband or whatever, trying to be a good wife. And then the, the people don't appreciate you. They appreciate somebody who kick them in the butt. Who, sometime a person appreciates somebody, the the way the worse they treat them, they appreciate that person over somebody who's been loyal and dedicated and really love them. You know, so that you have to give them that a lot of thoughts because that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. They don't. They would say would take their inheritance and they would take it from the woman that helped them stay with them when they had nothing and give it to some young person that they just met or somebody that they just met. They take everything out of her name and put it into the young the other person's name. And I've seen it happen so many times. Like like women years ago used to uh, get a divorce from their husbands and then they had moved their boyfriend into the house and the poor husband throw him out in the street. He's walking or walking the street and he see the woman in the house with the boyfriend. He doesn't even have a job. So in other words, you're taking care of everybody, your wife, the boyfriend, and the children. And so a lot of times, a lot of the judge said, no, this can't. After a period of time, the judge said, this can't, this can't go on. So what has happened is when you, when you um, divorce now, when you get a divorce now, the one that has the most money have to contribute to the one that doesn't have a lot of money. So I don't know what that's good or bad, but it is. But it's just something to think about the first wife and the second wife. And and uh, I remember Roseanne, 
She had to give her her husband fifty million dollars, and she's still cussing him. <laughs> she, the court says she had to pay fifty million dollars, and he's doing pretty good now. <laughs> $50 million she got him after they got the divorce. Some of the best things in life bloom late in the season. Some of the best things in life bloom late in the season. A lot of times you, you trying to do something. Sometimes a lot of, I hear a lot of people say they sleep in the cars. Uh, I heard Jackie Gleason say one time, him and Lucy Ball, when they were young, trying to make it. He, they were looking in the window of a lot of restaurants and if they saw somebody leaving a a tip or uh, some leftover meal, they would go in there, finish the meal, take the tip and go out. <laughs> you know, they did anything they had, they they did anything they could to survive the state for the next day. Or well, I heard Jackie Lisa say one time, he was in um, a, a nice hotel, but when it came time to pay the bill, he would sneak out the window <laughs> and go to another hotel to the state. And then, and then some people go to, um, they go to find out, because a lot of rich people have a lot of houses, not just one. If you have 13 houses, like John McCain said, yeah, you can't sleep in all them houses. You can only stay in one. You're only one body, one house, you know. But you have maids and everything in there, and then when you get ready to come to visit, you call them up, and they freshen the place up, and you come to visit. But other than that, basically, it's the, it's the maids' place, because they're the ones that's there. They're the ones that's living in it and everything like that. But, uh, boy... I tell you the truth. So a lot of time people find out about these houses and the address and they sneak in there. <laughs> yes, you can't be in there. So they sneak in there and they live quietly in a way they know how to live in quietly. And they, of course, nobody's there when it's time for somebody to come around or the police are making their circles or trying to find out if they, everything is okay with the house. They know how to be quiet and to get around it. So a lot of time people live like that, you know, live in other places other people's homes and stuff like that. They're not supposed to be there, but they know how to, some people just know how to get over it. I, I don't know. <laughs> and um, one thing about it, um, you're not here to get beautiful. You wasn't born here to get beautiful. You already are. You just, you, you're born beautiful because everybody's born with a, um, with a, a certain amount of looks, a certain amount of talent, a certain amount of you in you that nobody else could possess because no two things are alike. Everything is different. Everything, every grain of sand, every snowflakes, they're all different, you know. So, and, and it's different for reasons because we all have something to give, to offer and to give. I think if all the talents, all the talents of all the people were exposed and share each other's knowledge, there wouldn't be any problems in the earth. But, but it's not like that. Somebody knows it all, you know. I'm the prettiest and this is the way... They want you to say, this is beautiful. Tall is beautiful. Short is beautiful. Big breasts is beautiful. Big butt is beautiful. You know, mustache is beautiful. You know, with smooth skin, small nose, small. My baby, come on. That's not, uh, that's not, that's not uh, right. That's not right. Because then you see people in all these operations trying to get this, trying to get that, trying to be beautiful, trying to wear designer clothes. You know, they figure that they got all these things and they, that's it for them, but it's not. It's not it's a falseness. It's a fake. It's a fake you. It's not the real you, you know. And so, you know, you, you're just beautiful. You just have to recognize your own beauty. No matter how rough your path or how far your journey, just keep on walking in the light. And remember, God's got you and he will never let go. So I just want those little, few little things that I live by and that I treasure and, um, uh, I want you to just think about yourself and what you want in life. I understand my daughter was saying a lot of, if you notice that a lot of our robots, our robot is taking over our lives in a lot of different forms. They don't look like robots, but they are robots. They are robots, like, like the uh, GPS system. And now they, they're telling you where to go. How can you know where everybody is and every traffic light and every turn and every, you, you, got, you, you got, you at this corner, you turn it wrong, go back. I mean, how do they know this? And then, and, 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 you know, and um, I, I don't know. And then they got houses that that controls. You just walk in the house and the house could open the door, close the door, turn the light on, cook the food. It's nothing for you to do. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's frightening to me. It's, it's taking everything from you. And then they're taking all the jobs from you. Or you, they're getting rid of the post office, the banks, the, the grocery stores, the, the, the deli. Everything they get rid of, they're giving it to the robot. What are you supposed to do? I mean, come on. 
So they get, he goes, I mean, because those uh, robots don't go to the store shop, you know. I mean, so what is man supposed to do? They're giving all the jobs to the robots. And they pretty soon, like the Jetsons, they're going to have them walking or walking around your house looking like you. And if you saw the, the movie, I Robot, look at that. I mean, you guys think of it as just a movie, but it's something that the scientists are working on. Like they're getting ready for the car. They said in 1935, in 2035, they don't want to see no more gas cars on the road. They want to see just electric cars. And even now the electric cars are going to be in danger because I saw cars that are they're training to fly. I saw them lift off the ground and take off. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to be for us. Somebody say we're going to live in the sky. Some people say we're going to live in the ocean. I don't know where they're going to live, but I'm not. I'm too old to even think about it because I, I just want to be here for, for to see all these changes. But when I was young, changes came, but they came slow. Now changes are coming very, very fast. It's confusing the heck out of people, you know. One week is this, and you go next week is something else. Now I just found out you could just take take your credit card and just tap it on the on the bus and pay the bus fare. You could tap it. You could tap it on the screen on the TV and order something from Amazon. You could tap it for your key for your door to go into your hotel room. You could just t tap it, you know, for pay for anything. And it's kind of frightening to me. Oh my God. You know, I know pretty soon, there probably is sometimes some places that you could just use your eyeball for uh, for uh, for a key, you know, or your handprint for a key. You know, sometimes people get it, write a check and they just take a picture of the check and send that. And then you could just tear the check up. But I said, oh, my God, all the old people like me are still using an uh, envelope and a stamp stamp on it. I said, what are you, where you come from, lady? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I feel safe like that. I mean, it's the old-fashioned way, but I just feel safe. But uh, but I, I just want you to um, think about think about yourself. Think about what you want. Think about what you want to go. Where you want to go. What you want. What you want out of life. Like my daughter was saying, although a lot of jobs are being lost, it was first it was lost from the uh, COVID, you know, and then after the COVID, then the robots are just moving in, taking over everything, and then and then. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy with me because people, the, the people going to college don't have, they, they, they're paying all this money for a college fee. And then they, when they get out of college, there's no jobs for them. It's just crazy. You know, you're confusing people, you're keeping people confused. They don't know what's going on, you know, because people are not honest. You know, if, if you, to me, if you're getting ready to go to college, you should, somebody should come around and say, well, this is this trade is going out of business, but this is be a good one to invest in. You know what I mean? If you don't want to go to college, because everybody's not college material. Trade school, there's nothing wrong with trade school. Sometimes I'm always looking for somebody to repair something for me. Trade school, like they used to have, if you don't want to go to college or school, go to a trade school and learn a good trade. People need to know certain things that they could do. There's certain things that trades people can still do that the robots are not going to do. So anyway... And every way you look, there's jobs for jobs for hiring. We need hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. And you go and you try to get that job, you can't get that job. I don't know what's what what the idea, what the, what what's going on, you know, because they're not being honest with the people. But anyway, keep trying. My my daughter was telling me the other day that you can get jobs on the on the computer. On the computer, they have all kind of jobs offering to people to 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 training that train you to. Get your own Instagram, get your own YouTube channel, and they pay you if you get enough customers. That's why people are always saying, subscribe, subscribe. They know the value of that word subscription. If you get enough of them, you could get a check sent to you every month, every week, whatever. So a lot of young people are doing that, and they're more into it. They're in tune to it than the older people. But but anyway, it's true. They're making thousands of dollars, these young people in here that know what's going on. Those rappers, for God's sake, they're making so much money. I don't know any girls just falling for them, guys with their pants hanging all down all over the place. I want to hit them on the head with a bas baseball bat. But I don't, you know, because they, for that reason is, I don't know what that reason is, not mine. But it's theirs, and they like it. The girls seem to like it. I don't know. I said, oh, boy, this lady told, this old lady told one boy, look, you better change your pants, because you've had the same old uh, red pants on underwear for four days now. <laughs> you don't care. He just pull his pants up. And keep going, but it, but anyway, just try to just try to keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye. Try to find out what's going on out there, and try to get involved with it because things are changing, and a lot of times they're changing for you. 
So I'll see you again next time. Bye. I love you. Bye. Love you.